this video, we'll be talking about trigger release part two. And we're going to be covering advanced techniques about trigger release, building on upon the ideas in the previous video, introduction to trigger release. So let's say we have a sideways ring that we want to collect. So we want to build a trigger release, a passive trigger release, such that this black hook falls and catches the ring. So the first instinct is, well, how do I build it? We need some sort of rod to pull it for it to be triggered. But if I wanted to bump against a mission model or a wall, I can only push. In this case, if you push it, it won't be able to trigger it. You, can only, you only can pull it. Now, this is where the hook comes in. Now, you can build a hook really easily, usually with really few, really few pieces, as shown here. So what we can do is we can thread it through this piece like so. And this will allow us to push this and fall down. To show you how it works, we'll bring it up close and use this yellow gear as an example of where we want to push. So again, the yellow gear is where we push, and if I do a side view, you see that this gray piece here is um, blocking the black hook from falling down. And as we push the yellow gear, like so, this thing is able to fall down because the gray piece is removed. Notice how this gray piece is being pulled, whereas this long black axle with the yellow gear on one side is pushed. Now this is important. This is converting a push to a pull. And this is achieved through the hook. And notice how the axle where we're pushing is longer than the axle we're pulling to achieve this effect. So another example of it in action is something, a little shovel that we made, or actually a little um, dumpster. So this red slide here is, uh, let's say we have some things that we want to dump off on this red slide. So if we push this yellow gear, it slides right off. Again, this is achieved through the simple hook. If you do a side view of this, notice how this is just the same hook. It's a little bit bigger, but the same idea. You got to, this is the little side here that's holding this in place. And this long black axle with the gear on the end is what we're pushing. So when we push it, this black axle gets pulled. Again, here we push it and that gets pulled. So the hook basically converts a pushing to a pulling. And it's all it does, allowing you to create more passive trigger release. So now I wanna talk about timers. If you remember from the last video, Introduction to Trigger Release, we showed you how to use one motor to trigger two or more, even more triggers at the same time. However, again, um, you can use one more to do all these triggers, but they have to occur at the same time. And now I can show you how you can have these, you can use what's called a timer, which I'll show you, to use one motor to control multiple um, trigger releases whenever you want them. So first little demonstration. Here's just a standard trigger release here. Um, we got this, notice how there's a red little beam attached to the motor. Imagine the yellow gear is a motor. And then we have this red beam here that's gonna be the trigger. So when I spin this, this little, when I spin this, this little red beam here hits out the large red beam and technically triggering it. So it, it, it bounces back here. So now if you look at this one, pretty much the same thing, it's not a trigger. Instead, it's black and black. So again, a little small black beam down here and a large black trigger. So when I spin this, bam, it hits it out. You know, just an example of a trigger release. Obviously, you can create trigger releases for more meaningful things, but this is just a demonstration. So what you can do again is you can combine them, right? And in the last video, we showed you how you can, you can obviously combine them so that you hit them at the same time. But you can use what's called a timer and trigger them at different times. So notice again, we have just typically, literally we took those two and put them on one. We have red and red again and black and black. <clears throat> so what happens 
is when we spin the yellow gear, if we spin it a little bit, bam, this red, uh, the little red beam hits out the, the large red beam. And notice, I didn't spin it enough. I built it so that when I, I didn't spin it so much that this top black beam isn't released yet. So now I can move the robot around, I can go do whatever I want, and whenever I want to trigger the black piece, I just spin that same motor a little more, and bam, it hits it out. So this is extremely useful, because now you can transform one motor into two or even more independent motors. And now you can have, now we can have them trigger at different times. So they're like literally independent. We can have this one go first. Well, this one has to go first and then that one. That's the only downside. But other than that, you know, you can have this one trigger first, then you can do whatever you want and you can trigger the second one whenever you want. Just spin the motor a little more. That's a general idea is that you spin the motor a little bit, a little bit, and this thing, the first trigger gets released. Then you spin the, the same motor a little more and the second trigger gets released. So you can use this in a lot of things and now I'm going to show you some examples. Now this is an example. Um, this attachment was from the 2014-2015 world class. So, but pretty much, you know, just an example. As you notice here, we've got an arm that's stretched by a rubber band, so it wants to flip in. But if you notice, it's being held in place by this piece. See that? That I'm moving. That's connected to the motor. So when I when I when I turn the motor a little bit, it's gonna release this arm. So this is an example of a timer because this arm release is the first trigger release. Then I have a second trigger release over here. Again, see this rubber band? This I don't know if you guys know, but this was used to shoot the ball. So this thing was gonna fling back and shoot the ball. So in, it's being held by this little hook mechanism here, and pretty much over here a bunch of direct and pinion, but basically a timer. So notice, I turn this a little bit, and bam, it hits it out. See, look, this thing moves, this little pin out here, and it was holding there originally. But like, I turned it a little bit, right? But this thing hasn't been triggered yet. These two are connected, however. So if we look at over here, notice that when I keep turning it, the rack and pinion spins, and now it's pulling the attachment. So if we look here, it's pulling, it's pulling, it's pulling, bam, it hits it out. Up here, see, if you notice, it's a rack and pinion system up here. Over here, it's a rack and pinion system. So that means it can move side to side, like that. So that's an example of a, a timer. So the attachment's really big, so it's hard to show, but the general idea is first gets triggered, next thing gets triggered. Because this rack and pinion system, when it first turned a little bit, it, it, it wasn't able to push this this beam. So just turn a little bit and then it's able to do the first action. And whenever I wanted it, I could just pull it a little more and this piece would pull back, flipping the ball out.